All right, this week's Ion MPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit is Nordic. Lydia, what is this week's Ion MPI? I love Nordic Semiconductor. I love their chips, and so it's always great to be able to highlight their stuff. They don't have a lot of product releases, but when what they do release is, of course, really excellent quality. Yeah, this yeah. one, honestly, it's not really new. It's everywhere once it But it's available. Yeah. And that's also another important thing. I, I also like to do Ion MPIs where you can get the thing. So this week's Ion MPI is the NRF. Um, 9160 uh, comes in three versions. This is their cellular module. So, you know, they're famous for, um, you know, they started with, uh, you know, go to the next page and you can read it while I ch chitter chatter. Um, you know, they started with, um, you know, uh, the NRF 2401, you know, famous uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, mesh meshable network chips, wireless chips that were so easy to use. And then they did the NRF 8001 Bluetooth low energy, and then they did the NRF 51, which had the integrated mic controller. And that's where I think things start to really um, turn around, not turn around, but I think become very interesting because instead of just being a peripheral wireless module, the microcontroller um, is embedded inside of it. And so, you know, the NRF 51 um, started this idea of having a soft device where you have the, the microcontroller and the radio bonded together in a module or in a chip and you know you you don't have to have a separate microcontroller, and it's designed for low power. And it's designed for uh, being very inexpensive and very small because you don't have uh, two things uh, communicating. So that same idea, the NRF51, 52, and NRF53 uh, series now, um, they took that same idea of let's not have a separate radio, let's have the radio and microcontroller together, and they did the NRF9160. So this is a uh, LTM or NB-IoT, uh, so two cellular um, networks uh, with 5G, and GNS, GNSS, so GPS, you know, or uh, GLONASS or Baby or whatever uh, satellite systems they support, all integrated together with, as you can see on the right, um, a 64 megahertz Cortex, ARM, ARM Cortex M33, so it's a nice uh, fast processor, one megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM, um, plus trust zones, so this means you can run, you know, your Zephyr, or Toss, or what have you, on the board and do cellular, and it's all very, very thin and very, very compact. Um, so yes, yeah, so as mentioned, like they, they've also, by the way, um, added Wi-Fi, and hopefully that Wi-Fi chipset will make it into uh, DigiKey's featured product soon when it's released. When there's hardware release, we'll talk about it. But you know, I, basically, it's like the the strength the, the strength that they brought to Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, and the usability, I think, is very interesting that they're like, we're going to now bring this to cellular as well. Okay, so inside um, is, you know, it is a, is a SIP. It's a system and package. It's not a chip, but it's like a, mo you know, it's a very thin module that's chip-like. But inside, you've got that standard Cortex M33 ARM chip, and then you've also got the modem. Um, and the modem is what connects to the LTE uh, GPS network. You, of course, need an external SIM. Um, but what's nice is everything's integrated together, including either even the, the temperature compensated crystal and the PMIC, um, which means that you don't need a lot of external components and you get all the stuff with that Cortex M33 that you would expect. Analog digital inputs, uh, I2S support, PDM support, PWM, like 20 plus GPIO. So, you know, if you, you don't have to have like two separate chips if you wanna like get some sensor data in, process it and then send it over cellular or receive cellular commands, control some motors, you can do that all in one. Um, so the, the modem is communicated to you with AT commands, um, although you know what's nice is that you don't have to port the AT command parser uh, on your own. It's, you know, they, they give you software support for it. But you know, like any cellular module, you do communicate it with, with AT command sets. Um, to tell it what to do, and you know, I didn't go through the entire AT command set, but yeah, you know, it's got all the things that you expect: connecting, disconnecting. There's a socket data interface um, that's separate than the command interface, which is kind of nice. Um, it's only for data, NB-IoT and LTM, so it's not for making phone calls. It's for sending machine to machine uh, data back and forth, you know, MQTT or HTTP or HTTPS uh, data. Um, but it is a is a data system. Uh, for cellular. That said, you know, a lot of things nowadays, um, we were talking about like you know, every scooter has a GPS plus cellular module in it, so it works anywhere in the world. Um, you get the eSIM or the SIM attached to it, 
uh, you've got you know global or at least nationwide coverage um, that I'm worrying about Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, the powerful thing that Nordic provides, because you're like, well, wait a minute, I can get cellular modules anywhere. You know, we, we've covered cellular modules on IMMPI, um, and there are a lot of makers. But what I think is really powerful is is Nordic always has really really good SDKs and really really good support. So, you know. People tend to use, when they use the NRF52, they do like to use the, the Adafruit stack for it, for Arduino. But that said, the NRF Connect SDK has a lot of great examples and they have, um, uh, the Info Center will show you, and they also have a really good support uh, forum where you can talk to engineers and you can talk to them in private. You can have like a, you know, un, un public area um, if you need to get help with your design in or your, or your firmware, and they're very responsive. Um, and then it's just, there's needs like they have a whole system for how they do uh, their, their SDK support and updates and, and they're they really keep it up to date it's like it's first class um, believe me I've, I've used other billion dollar company SDKs and they've been very painful um, we've always really really liked the Nordic SDK uh, and the info center is also really good um, I've you know not used it for the NRF 91 but I did use it a ton with the NRF 52 and uh, they have a lot of questions, they have errata, and again, use this with their forums and their um, engineer support to, to get your project going. And, and you know, you're, you're, you pay a little bit more maybe for really good quality products, but the support makes it worth it. I've never heard anyone say anything other than how uh, good the Nordic SDK support is. Um, and there's also videos, of course, uh, so check that out. And uh, we'll show a fun video at the end of uh, this uh, chat. So there's three uh, variants for it. Um, there's the Sika, which is what we're, we're highlighting. And that's the version that has LTM, NB-IoT, and GNSS. It's going to be the more expensive of them. I think it's like 20 ish $24. But if you're willing to go to the you know LTM or NB-IoT only versions and you don't need GPS support, um, you can save a couple bucks. These are very inexpensive. I mean, it's basically the cost of what you would normally spend with you know, an, a module, but you really get everything built in with it. And again, very few other external components are required. The modules also, what I thought was neat is they all have, um, you know, 700 megahertz to something, three gigahertz, two, two point something gigahertz uh, bandwidth, which means that there is no, you know, one thing I've noticed with cellular modules is there's like the North America version and the Europe version, and this is like Africa and this is South America and Australia. And like, it's, it's, it's very zoned based on the frequency, but um, because these are all wideband, you can use any of them in any um, zone that has the frequency support, and they have certifications, for, like various certifications, regulatory certifications like PTCRB, um, FCC, CE, et cetera, so you can kind of get kick-started with um, your design. So check out, you know, they have a certifications page where you can like look at it, make sure, of course, that the country that you're using it in um, it's pre-certified for the band you want to use, but of course you can use any band. Um, so just just be aware of what it is, so that when you go for your final product certification, you can kind of skip a couple steps because you'll be like it's pre-certified. Uh, there are some great dev kits for this. This is the I mean this is the massive NRF 9160 dev kit. Um, DK stands for Dev Kit and DigiKey. Uh, this one has, you know, the Arduino compatible headers. It's got everything in it, right? It's got like the built-in antennas. It's got um, battery monitoring. It's got the looks like the, the FT two two three two H JTAG whatever SIM slot. It's massive, but it's got like everything, everything, everything. So it's good if you're like, I need to have a dev kit for my um, original product design, and I need to have everything exposed. Um, so great for like hardware hacking, and of course. Uh, I think it comes with the Sika. So then if you decide later you don't need NB-IoT, you can then, the, the, the three versions are pin compatible. So you just use the version that has only LTM. My favorite um, dev kit, just because of the name, is the Thingy 91. You can tell that there's just marketing was like, okay, we're gonna call it the Thingy. Um, and it's also an NRF 9160. You can see there's a SIM card holder. Um, I think this was an NRF 52840 on there. Um, as a coprocessor, it's got sensors and stuff built in, um, but it's compact battery power. It's like designed for like, you want to design a, a low power user experience that maybe if your hardware has overlap with the built in hardware on the thingy, um, again, you can, uh, you know, prototype with it, but it's much smaller and it comes in like a little rubber 
uh, case with a with a hole so you can attach it to something. So uh, the video, the the pizza project, you use a thingy because it has the accelerometer, um, you know, humidity temperature sensor, and the cellular all built in. And then, of course, if you like feathers, there's also uh, an, a Nordic NRF 9160 Sika feather, right? So this is uh, lets you use the, you can see how few components you need to get this running. I mean, you basically just attach an antenna to the outside for GPS and cellular, and then you, you know maybe have a couple of components on the beginning for battery charging and LDO, but you're, you're pretty much ready to go out of the box. Um, this is from Ictinus, and uh, it's available from... Uh, from us or from DigiKey, you can get they get, get the feather. Speaking of, there. Um, this is something you can actually get. Thingy. It's on DigiKey. That's right. They have a lot in stock. Twenty five thousand. Last I checked. Yeah. They also have this sick. This is a Sika, but there's also the Sick BA and a Sick AA. Um, but they have all three versions, which I thought was amazing. They don't have the dev kits in right now, but I think they're going to get some more soon. Um, but if you want to get a cellular module, this is one of the few cellular modules uh especially one with the mic controller that's inexpensive and available and uh we have a cool video that nordic put together we're gonna play just a little bit of it have you heard about this uh, new startup the nrf pizza delivery guys no what are they doing cellular iot pizza delivery they're running uh, prototype uh, rounds now with the nordic thing in 91. oh that's cool. But what are they doing differently from other pizza delivery services? So they're taking a pizza delivery to a whole new level. Every pizza box has a Nordic thing in like one inside. And this has sensors on it capable of measuring temperature, pressure and acceleration and much more. And uh, this is transferred over to the Nordic NF9160 SIP, mm. which also has GPS. Mm. Then all of this data is transferred up to the NRF Connect for Cloud using the new low power cellular technologies, LTM and MBIoT. Mm. That sounds cool, but what are they actually using the sensor data for? Oh, they, they also have this uh, app called uh, NRF Pizza. And uh, after you've ordered your pizza, you can see exactly where it is on the map and when it will arrive. It will also show you the temperature of the pizza and if it has been flipped or not. Mm. The app extracts all this data through the NRF Connect for Cloud device API so that the app can uh, get access to the GPS and sensor data directly. Mm, nice. Yeah, and the best part is if, if the temperature gets too low or the pizza is flipped, you get it for free. Oh, sweet. That sounds like something that will really disrupt the pizza delivery market. My pizza's here. Gotta go. Yeah, see you. Yeah.